infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, rabies is a topic we report on the website pretty often, and we discuss it on this podcast several times. Now, last May, we reported on a human rabies death in, in a Virginia resident who traveled overseas. And that's where she contracted uh, the deadly virus. Now, last week in the CDC publication, the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, or better known as the MMWR, they published a report on this tragic case, which detailed the case and offered some very important recommendations. So joining me now is the state public health veterinarian with the Virginia Department of Health, Dr. Julia Murphy, and veterinary epidemiologist with the CDC Rabies Program, Dr. Ryan Wallace. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. You bet. Um, let's go ahead and can one of you just start with a short summary of just to lay it out for the audience of what is rabies, how is it contracted, and how serious of an infection this is? Well, uh, rabies is a virus that in, infects the central nervous system, uh, ultimately causing inflammation in the brain tissue and is nearly always fatal once clinical signs appear. People usually get rabies from the bite of a rabbit animal, but it's also possible, although rare, that people could get rabies of infectious material from a rabid animal, such as that animal's saliva, gets directly into a person's eyes, nose, mouth, or an open wound. Right, and, and this is, as you said, uh, nearly 100% fatal if without prophylaxis, basically. Yes, once clinical signs appear, uh, it, it is nearly 100% fatal. Right. So how common is human rabies infection globally and here in the U.S.? Well, human rabies cases are very rare in the United States, uh, with only two to three cases reported per year in this country. Uh, just to give you an idea of, of the uh, of the recent epidemiology we've had in this country, 23 cases of human rabies have been diagnosed in the U.S. since 2008, of which seven cases were found to have contracted infection from dog bites sustained outside of the United States and its territory. But it's important to remember that it's estimated that about 60,000 people die from rabies annually around the world with most of those cases being reported out of sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. And dog bite exposures account for the majority of human cases worldwide. Rabies is uh, present in dogs. Uh, it's endemic in dogs in 122 countries around the world, and it's actually the most common cause of, of death for all, among all zoonotic diseases. So here in the, in the United States, what animal is responsible for most human rabies deaths? Well, there, there are a couple of risk factors. The main risk factors for people in this country uh, associated with rabies virus exposure would either be traveling abroad and having exposure to a dog in a country where, the, where a canine variant of the rabies virus is present, or exposure to a bat in this country. Those are right. those are two risk factors for people in this country. Okay. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the case um, that uh, was written about in the MMWR. Um, this individual spent some time overseas and was bitten by a puppy. Uh, can either of you elaborate on this case? Can you kind of give the timeline of what happened? Sure. Well, the, the patient was in India for three months. She had traveled there in the early part of 2017. She got back in early April 
of 2017. And while she was in India, it was reported that the patient was bitten on her right hand while petting a puppy that was in the immediate area of a hotel where she was staying at the time. So she returned to the United States and um, she presented with initially with arm pain. Can you go on from there? Yes, that's right. Uh, from there, she she presented. Um, she sought care at a uh, an urgent care facility for that pain. But then, over the next several days, leading her to her hospitalization on May eighth, she continued to deteriorate uh, with a strong neurologic component to her illness, and eventually was was hospitalized. On, on May 8th. Now, did she ever seek uh, post-exposure prophylaxis? She washed the wound. What was reported to us here in Virginia uh, based on the interviews with, with family and, and friends uh, once she became ill, it was reported to us that the patient washed the wound, which is an important post-exposure uh, response to a bite, but she did not undergo rabies post-exposure prophylaxis after the bite. Yeah, very unfortunate. And I understand that part of the treatment protocol was the Milwaukee protocol, um, but with no success. Well, yes, she did receive treatment. Um, and with with what is, uh, with, with guidance from the uh, physician who helped to develop the Milwaukee Protocol, the Milwaukee pro Protocol uh, not necessarily being one standard protocol, but a protocol designed to give a general framework for support of a human rabies case until that person can help to develop uh, his or her own antibodies to rabies. But um, uh, she did... Um, she did eventually... The, the, the family eventually decided to withdraw advanced medical support after she had been in the hospital for uh, about five days. Yeah. Um, now, for me, when I was reading the report, uh, the most important thing of this case were, to me, the lessons learned. And I think there was three very important lessons. And I, I'd like one of you to address each one of them individually. And the first one is the importance of abstaining from contact with animals you don't know. Well, in, in, in general, avoiding contact with, with wild animals and domestic animals that you don't know, particularly while traveling, is always recommended. Uh, animals can carry a variety of diseases in addition to rabies. And then if you are bitten or scratched by an animal, we, we do recommend the, the immediate post-exposure response of washing the wound and then being assessed by a health care provider. Uh, so that, I think that's a good general recommendation whether whether you travel or or not right and uh secondly is the importance of timely administration of pep and uh, obviously this woman did not uh receive pep but an important uh question is if if you are a traveler overseas and you do get an animal bite or a scratch um and you receive pep overseas how do you know if you can trust it yeah, I think one of the biggest questions based on where you're traveling to is actually if you can even get rabies vaccine and rabies immune globulin, the components of PEP, in that country. Most countries, at least in major urban centers, will have some quantity of, of the vaccine, um, but its availability is, very, is highly variable across the world. Um, so one thing you can do is access uh, the, the Yellow Book and a website on CDC that gives some guidance. It's our best knowledge of if vaccine is widely available or potentially limited in availability in that country. Right. Uh, you can also, before traveling, talk with your doctor or go to a travel clinic. They'll have a good understanding of what type of zoonotic disease risks are in that country. Uh, and then you can also consult the U.S. Embassy uh, within that country to see if they have any uh, other health care advice prior to traveling. And, and uh, Dr. Wallace, upon return and you had 
you receive PEP, say in India, um, hypothetically in this case, would you want to see a doctor when you got back to determine whether you required another dose of PEP? Yes, absolutely. If you're exposed to a potentially rabid animal while traveling abroad, um, your, your actually first response should be to wash the wound. But then, if possible, you should try to come back to the United States uh, to talk to your healthcare provider here. Now, that's not always possible. And, and if, if there is access to vaccine in country that you trust, uh, then you can initiate the series there. But if the series is initiated outside the United States, you should absolutely consult with a healthcare provider here. Um, they'll assess the likelihood of the vaccine was given appropriately, uh, that it was a high quality vaccine, and that there were no deviations in the protocol. Sure. And, and lastly, and I think it's something that most people don't even think about, is when you're traveling to certain areas of the world, and for, and especially for lengthy durations, uh, pre-travel rabies vaccination should be considered. What do you, what do you say? That should be a decision that's made um, in combination with your physician, you, uh, yourself, and maybe a travel health clinic. There are certain risk factors you should definitely be aware of depending on where you are traveling to. That includes what the level of rabies is in that country and which animals carry it. It includes your access to vaccines and if they're readily available in that country. Um, you'll also want to look at the type of activities you're doing. If you're going to be doing activities that put you at risk of interacting with wildlife or potentially like caving is a, is a good example where you might be in the vicinity of bats and other animals that might have rabies. Yeah. Those are all things you'll want to take into broad consideration to determine if, if pre-exposure vaccination is necessary. Yeah, and considering in this case India, which is, I don't know, accounts for maybe close to half of the human deaths uh, globally, um, India would be a very good example of a, of a time that you, you would want to get pre-vaccine vaccinations or pre-travel vaccinations. Yeah, India is a, India is a very uh, high-risk country. They have a very high burden for yeah. canine rabies, so the virus that's spread in dogs. They do have pretty good access to rabies vaccine, but if you're going to be there for an extended period of time doing activities that might put you in contact with dogs, um, it, it would usually be advised to get pre-exposure vaccination. Yeah, very good. Um, the, the floor is open to either of you. Uh, any final thoughts on rabies, this particular case, or anything related to it? Well, for me, I would say that certainly it's important to know what to do uh, in, the, in the immediate aftermath of a bite, but even more important is the or as important, is the pre-travel planning and considering health risks that you may have as an international travel, uh, as an international traveler, uh, which may include rabies or a, a host of other things, and trying to have those conversations and be prepared before you leave uh, so that you, you have a, a, can return home healthy and well. And uh, just, just one more, um, I, I guess I would offer just one more thing, which is that you don't have to travel to another country to potentially be exposed to rabies. We do have rabies here, endemic in wildlife in the United States. And, right. and so certainly people should um, take precautions here as well, like reporting bites promptly, uh, seeking medical advice not only for wound care, but also um, for any kind of rabies prevention interventions that may need to occur. and to um, to not take matters into your own hands if you see stray animals or uh, wildlife that appears to need some type of intervention, but rather engage with wildlife professionals, uh, your local animal control, or your veterinarian to see what might be the best course of action in, in that regard. I'll just add that we've done a very good job of controlling rabies here in the United States over the last 50 years, we've eliminated the virus that circulates in dogs, which is the highest risk for being transmitted to people globally. Um, and through that reduction of the highest risk, burden in the highest risk animal, uh, people aren't always thinking about rabies risks and exposures here in the United States anymore. Uh, and it's important to recognize that uh, about two-thirds of the world is still heavily impacted by this 
disease, uh, rabies in dogs. And if you're traveling abroad, it's very important to look at if that disease is present there and what health recommendations might exist. All right. Well, great advice from both of you, and I appreciate it very much. Dr. Julia Murphy, Dr. Ryan Wallace, thank you very much for your time and your expertise. Thank you. Thank you.